If you're a classroom teacher, you probably have some concerns about students using AI to cheat on writing assignments. Can you reliably detect AI content on student submissions? I have five student essays. Let's find out. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. This is actually part two of a video series on AI content detectors. In part one, I discussed some of the challenges with AI content detection, and we decided to put it to the test by looking at five student essays and five content detectors. In this video, I'm going to be revealing the results to see if those five content detectors can correctly identify an essay as written by a human human or an AI chatbot. If you'd like to test out these AI content detectors on your own, you can visit the URL on the screen, which will give you access to this website, which includes those five sample essays and my five favorite AI detectors. You can use your own as well if you'd like. I'm going to now reveal the results of what happened when I took those five essays and ran them through those five AI detectors that you see. If you guessed that essay number one was written by a human, you would be correct. This is the only essay that was not written by AI. Now let's take a closer look at how our AI detectors did. Brisk Teaching did a nice job, unlikely written by human. So did Copy Leaks, GPT-0, and Undetectable. Now, uh, Zero GPT was a little concerned. It thought that possibly up to 17% was AI generated. However, this is 100% written by a human eighth grade student. Let's move on to essay number two. This one was in fact written by AI. I used chat GPT 3.5 to generate this essay. However, I went even one step further Rather than just copying and pasting this essay into Google Docs, I actually manually typed out the essay provided by ChatGPT. This was enough to fool Brisk writing. Uh, one of the features of Brisk that I do like is the ability to look at the revision history to see how the document was created. And Brisk will actually identify large passages that are copied and pasted. I was aware of that feature, and so by manually typing this out, it hides the fact that AI was used to generate this essay. So Brisk was unable to identify this as AI generated. Copy leaks also was unable to do so. Uh, GPT zero. Now zero GPT was kind of on the fence. It was like 50-50 um, and undetectable. Also said most likely human. So. Even though this was written by AI, it was very easy to fool the AI detectors with a fairly basic uh, little trick by typing it out. Let's look at essay number three. This also was written with AI, and I utilized a new feature for Google Docs. This is a premium feature, so not everybody would have access. Um, I utilized the Help Me Write feature. So Gmail has a similar thing where you can, you know, tell it what you want and it actually writes it into the document. I really didn't do much to hide my use of AI for this one. Um, so pretty much all of the AI tools were like, mm, this doesn't look quite right. Brisk, copy leaks, GPT zero, uh, undetectable, all indicated that this is most likely written uh, by AI. This is an example of a student being pretty lazy, not even really trying to uh, hide the fact that they're using AI. Example number four, also written with AI. This time I used ChatGPT 3.5, but I went one step further. I found a website called plagiarismremover.com, which will DAI your text, it humanizes it, making it more difficult to attribute it to AI. This did seem to fool a lot of the detectors, brisk, copy leaks, GPT-0, um, all were uh, confused, undetectable as well. Only zero GPT was a little suspicious, uh, said that it might be up to 25% AI generated. There are a lot of these tools available where you take something written by AI, drop it into a different tool and it will use more human-like language and sentence structure uh, so it's more difficult to uh, attribute it to artificial intelligence.
Now, our last essay was written by Claude.ai. This is another AI chatbot uh, by Anthropic. Not as popular as Gemini or ChatGPT, but very capable. Um, and this time in my prompt, I specifically asked Claude to write the paper as an eighth grade student. So use language and grammar that a typical eighth grader would use. And I actually worked on this for a long time because it was giving me essays where the, the sophistication of the language and the words and the examples are just like, there's no way an eighth grader would ever uh, do that. So um, I worked a lot harder to make sure that this one sounded more like an eighth grader. And that again, did seem to be sufficient to fool brisk copy leaks, uh, zero GPT, um, uh, undetectable. So it was kind of on the fence. Um, GPT zero was moderately confident that it was human. Uh, now zero GPT was not fooled. It said 79% AI generated. So a lot of variance between these tools, but as you can see from these results, it's pretty easy to fool AI detectors with just a moderate amount of additional effort. Now, don't just take my word for it. If you want to run your own test, you're welcome to visit the URL on the screen, download my sample essays and test them out. You can also try your own documents and see uh, if the AI detectors work well for you. I don't want you to be discouraged after watching this video. One of the points I want to make is you don't want to over rely on AI detectors. As you can see, they're easy to fool. You're going to get a lot of false uh, positives. And if you're working with students who are English language learners or just not as good at writing, you may get some false positives where it attributes it to AI when in fact they did actually write it. So number one, don't over rely on these AI content detectors. But honestly, do you really even need them? I mean, check out this essay. This is number three. A keystone species is a species whose impact on the environment is far greater than its abundance might suggest. They exert a profound influence on the structure. What eighth grader is writing that fluently? I mean, that's amazing. Every teacher has their own internal spidey sense. When they read something, they're just like, hmm, that just doesn't sound right. So I really don't think you need an AI content detector to determine if a student has written something using ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or whatever. If you see something and you're suspicious, just go and talk to the student. Just say, this is amazing. Can you tell me more about how you wrote this. What resources did you use? This is a really great point. Where did you come up with that? I just have a discussion with them. You don't have to accuse them. Just get to know your student. I found this, uh, this tweet, uh, quite a while ago before, uh, ChatGPT was so popular from a teacher and, and it's great. If you have concerns, if you have suspicions, just go talk to them and uh, see what happens. The revision history is another you know, great tool that you can utilize that gives you some insight into how this document was um, written. I do like um, Brisk, their replay feature. Not only does it show you how many copies and paste there are, how many edits there were, but also how long it took to create this document. I mean, even if you see something that doesn't have copy and paste, but it took eight minutes to write this paper, that just doesn't make sense. I couldn't write that paper in eight minutes. So AI detectors, they're out there. You can try them if you want. There's a lot of credible evidence that suggests they're not very effective, but frankly, you don't even need them. You've got lots of tools on your own. Now, the bigger issue is what is causing students to rely on ChatGPT or Gemini instead of just putting in the work? And this is a tremendous challenge, one that has existed in classrooms for a very, very long time. Going back to the introduction of the internet and kids who were just copying and pasting Wikipedia articles. So the, the root cause has not changed. Student um, apathy, lack of interest, lack of relevance is causing them to use these methods of cheating. Now, the sophistication and the difficulty of detecting it certainly uh, has increased. It's, it's a lot more difficult today than you know it was 10, 15 years ago. I ran across a, a really good blog post by Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook that I thought was worth bringing up, and I'll link to this in the um, uh, notes for this video. And he came up with um, four, four things. I'll 
you know, introduce them to you and you can, you know, agree or disagree. Let me know in the comments. Number one, confidence. Perhaps the students lack the skills to perform the task that's been assigned to them. They don't feel that they can do it or they don't know how. That might be why they're using AI. Um, uh, secondly, execution. Um, they don't know how to get to the end. And this is particularly true of very long, complex assignments, you know, breaking it down into smaller chunks, just write a sentence, just write a paragraph, and then putting that all together into a, a bigger project might be an effective strategy. Um, could be time related. Um, sadly, students are overscheduled uh, between sports and extracurricular activities. They may feel that they're just under too much pressure and they don't have the time to devote to it. Now, that's not something you can necessarily solve. That's a, a parent issue um, as well, but something that might be contributing to a student's um, use of AI. Um, and then number four, and this is one that I really think is probably the biggest one, is relevance. Students just don't see how a particular assignment is necessary for their life, how it impacts them in a positive way. Now, this is a tremendous challenge for teachers. We've been trying to answer the why question for as long as there's been school. Why do I have to do this? Why does this matter? Why do I have to learn algebra or learn how to write, etc.? I'm not going to be a journalist. I don't want to be an author. Why do I need to know this? Every teacher needs to have a very compelling answer to that why question. Now, I'll put some resources in the video description that might help you with that. One of the things that I um, try to do is um, to help students put some skin in the game, to create assignments where there's an external audience for their project so they have some intrinsic motivation to make that good um, and their own work because other people will see it. Uh, that's one way that you can consider making things more relevant and potentially reducing a student's desire to use AI to cheat on their assignments. If you haven't seen part one of this video series, you can check that out up here. And if you're interested in downloading those sample essays and trying your hand at those AI content detectors, you can find that link in the video description as well.